Okay, now we're going to get into some really sophisticated stuff. The first thing I want to point out, piggybacking on what you just saw, is that beginning with the Lord's death, what Paul's doing is he's showing convergence. That's the whole point of this business with the 78 sevens. He's doing an audit to show the convergence of Israel's time in church, how church will fulfill the time so that Israel's time can resume, bearing in mind that everything is vested in Christ so Israel can't lose it. She inherits through Christ just as we do. Two walls is what Paul's really setting this up for so that it'll be real easy for the, you know, it's kind of climactic, chapter two. And, you know, chapter one's basically high, here's the timeline, which you can't see in English. And then chapter two is sort of climactic, see, there are two walls. And then three, chapter three is explanatory. That's why I'm given the mystery doctrine. Then chapter four is high, this is how the mystery doctrine gets done. Chapter five are the conclusions you draw from it, okay, about the marriage and bride and all that stuff. Then chapter six is basically where do we go from here? And the whole thing of Ephesians cracks me up when people think Paul didn't write this. Only Paul could have written it. Only Paul was this clever amongst the apostles, okay? John was pretty clever, but Paul wipes them all out. And it was Paul that was given the mystery doctrine. But anyway, Paul is patterning every chapter and the flow of Ephesians off of a Greek play by Euripides called Ion. Go get that play. You can read it in translation. You don't have to read it in the original Greek. Just track the flow of the play and then pick up the book of Ephesians. It's not going to be apparent in the English that he's tracking to the play, but the themes of what he's saying ought to be. Okay, just try to do that. If you got questions, let me know. Anyway, what he's trying to do is show the convergence of time. And so when you get to the Lord's death, all of a sudden, the blue timeline and the green timelines are being referenced. Year 1070 from David's birth, is the 1040th anniversary of his Hebron kingship, 1033 from United, and this is the year that the Lord actually dies, exactly on the anniversary of Passover. He's dying on, on the 1470th anniversary of Passover to the very day that Israel left, that Israel ate the Passover, left Egypt. You know, because he's dying, at, he's dying just before sundown at 3 p.m., 12 to 3 p.m. is when he's on the cross bearing sins. So there's the convergence with the Exodus. There's the convergence with the temple year because this is two 490s, as if the first temple never went down. And I've beefed up the listing now to, sh to include you know, the timeline of the second temple. So you can see that convergence too because he's also tracking to that. Okay, all of his, his meter numbers are tracking to both timelines. Okay, he's tracking to Adam, to Noah, to Jacob, to Abraham, to obviously David, and to the temple, and how they all converge in Christ. And he's really focusing on this period right here, when the Lord actually dies, to show that when he died, Everything happened exactly on time, in spite of the fact that he was scheduled to die seven years later. Okay? In other words, he's demonstrating that God foreknew the rejection and that all of this stuff worked because, see, he was scheduled to die here in 4143. That doesn't divide evenly by 490. It was scheduled, it was provided. Because, see, this timeline here is based on this timeline here. See, it's seven years later. Well, it's three years later, but it's it's got a seven-year hitch built into it because of that. 
ok he would have the same forty years it's also based on this ok see this to this is forty years we covered that already that would have been temple foundation year one thousand so he's showing convergence and that's real important because it's setting up his theme of well what if the rapture happens because now all bets are off it's church well God can make the rapture happen here well he could have made it happen immediately here but wasn't going to because church was just newly born there but enough people could have matured in seven years it wasn't going to happen but it could have there were 57 years actually scheduled pre-church that had yet to run so that's kind of what he's balancing to that's what they all balance to. That's what Moses was balancing to. Isaiah was balancing to. Daniel was balancing to. Mary was balancing to. They're all looking at this number right here. <clears throat> because 54 of it belongs to Abraham. And the other 3.5 is taking into account the fact that the temple started late. Okay? So all of his what-if scenarios from this point on this is a seven year difference from when Christ died and what he's doing is accounting for how the seven can play inside church and yet the schedule of the 57 years would still be met okay that's what he's doing it's a bunch of what if scenarios okay to show that God can still keep his promise even on the old schedule but Paul doesn't think he will Paul thinks it's going to take a lot longer okay but he doesn't know, and he said so in Philippians. I post in uh, Philippians 3.10. That's the Greek phrase that says, if by, any, if by any means, he's not sure which way. Okay, so the Lord should have died at 40, so we've got a little seven-year hickey in here as a what if, but it's not too likely because this has to still be reimbursed, okay? But it's 17 years before Paul writes and he's gonna bracket that he's picking the time he writes based on this 57 because that's what Mary was doing okay and he's it's a mirror see you know the year he writes the Lord was in his 57th year so he's bracketing the 57th year here to the Lord's birthday that's a sort that's somewhat of a gee whiz but um all the writers do that with their time poems. They, they love to play on equidistance because that's playing on Psalm 9, verse 15. Give us as many good days as you gave us bad days. They, they, they all play with this. Okay? And we saw Moses up here playing with it where he's got 1050 on either side of his time poem in Psalm 90. All right? So, I mean, Moses established the precedent as far as I can tell. I don't know if anybody else did a time poem before Moses. I haven't looked. <clears throat> Since Moses is the guy who wrote the Bible, I doubt it. I mean, Job would be the only other place to look. <clears throat> and I'm not sure that Job actually predates Moses. Okay, that's something that's been a theological speculation for a long time. And I haven't looked into that to find out what the scholarship is and how do you figure it out. So that's our first stop. And it's based on 57 years of the millennium. That's what he's tracking to. <coughs> the Lord should have died. This was Isaiah's meter. The Lord should have died 1077 after David's birth. And that would have been 4143 from Adam's fall. But he didn't. He died seven years earlier. So how do you account for the extra hanging, Chad? That's what Paul's doing. Next stop. And watch this. Because he's going to do everything in three and a half year increments now and the reason he's doing that is the temple is supposed to fall mid-year a mid you know trib and everybody was looking for the tribulation to actually start with the temples falling <coughs> they, there were two kinds of speculations it would start at any time the temple would fall three and a half years later or the temples fall would kick off the tribulation Okay, and that's why the book of Hebrews is written the way it is because it comes out in the year of the four emperors and the 40 years was almost up, you know, the 40 year warning period. 
I haven't gotten to that yet, but that's Mary's theme and Paul's, is that when he writes, there's 40 years left to the trib, he's piggybacking on Mary, who did her timeline up until the Lord was 56, up until there were 40 years to the trib. So she had some inkling that he wasn't going to die on time, that he was going to die early. You know, because why else would she track like that? But at any rate, people were expecting the, you know, because now it's church and because you can't predict it anymore. Okay, well, there'll be the traditional 40-year warning period, which is evocative of when he should have died, the age he should have died at. Okay, this is the kind, you know, all these numbers are mnemonics for the Jews. You know, that God is taking real history, he's really timing it this way, and then you're supposed to remember that, oh, he really timed it this way. And then you're supposed to associate 40 and 40 and 33 and 33 and 7 and 7 and 1,000 and 1,000. You know, that's why he times it as a lesson. If you didn't learn a lesson predictively, you can at least learn it in arrears. So you'll be ready for the next prediction. So that's what Paul's doing. So he's, he's notching everything in three and a half year increments at this point. Three and a half or seven. Okay, so the next stop is David's Hebron kingship. That would be a good time for the rapture. Temple would have been a thousand years old from its foundation. That's the 1050th year. See, convergence. He's looking for convergence. Okay, 1050 from David's Hebron kingship. Temple foundation year 1000. So what if the rapture occurs in 40, 40, 41, 46? Okay, now that was really pregnant because that would repay the time on our boy Abraham. Okay, okay, I'm still it's still working. Okay. That would prepare time on our boy Abraham. And I have a feeling my computer's about to die, so I'm gonna stop here and pick up again.